going to go over all the diseases and the conditions of the intestines, both small and large. My name is Mike the Healer Gut Guy. I used to have horrible Crohn's and colitis, but I fixed it 100% naturally. So we're going to go over what they are. You can't fix it if you don't know what it is, what's causing it, and then how to heal it, how to cure it. All of these things have a fix, despite what your modern doctor is telling you. And holistic medicine, there's a much better remedy than what holistic medicine has to offer. It usually has you suffering on boring, bland diets for the rest of your life. So, all right. So the first condition or symptom that a lot of people get is chronic diarrhea. What is causing diarrhea? Uh, a lot of people think it's like a messed up gut microbiome. Now, most people who have messed up gut microbiome have diarrhea, but there's something very specific going on somebody with diarrhea. This process is controlled by the intestinal muscles. They collapse in an instant. So like this holds like two liters of volume, let's say when it's expanded, a colon, and then boom, let's contract all the muscles. Now we can only hold a liter and now the vertical muscles are clamping down and pushing the poop out of us. The brain is telling the gut to do this. There's, there's so many processes involved. Only the brain could tell the gut to throw away. Like think about in the wild how hard it is to catch something, kill it, and then eat it. Why, why it takes so many calories to catch something and to make food. Why would the body just throw it all away? Look at our language. Oh, what a bunch of crap. This is crap. I want to get rid of it. I can't. They're talking crap. The brain is trying to help you get rid of crap that is decreasing your survival. Or there's actually some physically toxic stuff in your gut, which I'll talk more about. Now with the other side of this, constipation, this is when the intestines open up they expand to hold, like think about the biological purpose of diarrhea versus the biological purpose of constipation. This is a fight or flight response. Diarrhea, run, should I run or should I fight? And then constipation is the fear freeze response. I need to hold on to this precious thing. I need to hold on to this money. I just lost my job. I need to hold on to this boy or to this girl because they don't, they don't like me anymore. They like somebody else. It's, it's holding, like they, they've done studies where um, they hook people up to different machines so they can measure what their intestines are doing and they'll talk about things that make them angry and then they get diarrhea and, and, and inflamed. They talk about things that make them fearful and depressed and their, the, the muscles expand and open. The, uh, const and bloating, so all your intestines are, the intestinal muscles are opening up and expanding like that musical instrument goes down to this, then it goes to this. So that's what that's what's bloating. Now pain, um, when, so I'm, I'm gonna get it into more of this as I go through each condition. So pain can, ha all these symptoms can almost happen in almost any of these conditions. And so uh, we're gonna go over these in more detail. So pain in blood and mucus. So a brilliant doctor discovered this, that our gut issues stem from a traumatic event. I had a hard time seeing that because my gut issues started in middle school when my, like my parents would take away my Nintendo. But I saw, I see a lot of people, um, you know, after a breakup, after they lose their job, that is when their gut issues start. And it'll actually start around that time. They usually start for the first time when you resolve the conflict. So, do, when we're conflict active, the gut is actually developing extra gut cells, specialized gut cells to help us digest and absorb this important thing to our life, or some crap I want to get rid of, but I can't. And when that gets resolved, the body gets rid of these high maintenance cells by like literally like tearing them away with bacteria and fungi, and that's when you get pain, blood, and mucus in your stool. And this process just keeps going, like if someone comes down with like Crohn's or colitis or diverticulitis, 
the, the stress is just on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off until the gut starts to fall apart and, and you start to experience pain and stuff like that. So those are the general symptoms. So let's go through the conditions one by one and what they mean. So now we know the cause. It's a, it's a traumatic event. We know what they are. These gut conditions is uh, your body is a survival tool. It's putting an organ into over a, a different part of your intestines into overdrive. And Dr. Hammer, the guy who discovered this, could look at your brain CT scan and know exactly what gut, gut disease you had without even talking to you. So what are these things? It's the body putting the gut into overdrive um, to respond to a traumatic event. And many of you are not conscious of what that event is. It's, it's buried in the subconscious. So the, the cause is the traumatic event. So the fix is going to be coming to peace with that traumatic event on a conscious and subconscious level, mainly a subconscious level, um, which a lot of the time you just do bringing to consciousness. So I don't think I need this anymore. So bam, this is actually isn't an intestine thing, but it, it gets mixed up a lot of times. This gave me a lot of trouble because I didn't know what was going on. Bam, bile acid malabsorption. And it's actually, the, the body's not having trouble reabsorbing the bile. What's happening is that you're hitting a PTSD trigger, and this is gonna be a territorial anger or an identity conflict. It puts your pancreas or your gallbladder into overdrive, and then all this bile gets dumped into your intestines. And it's like, it's like literally like bleach, and the body's like, your brain's like, we gotta get this out of here, and you get diarrhea. So if your diarrhea is like green and foamy and extra stinky and it burns when it comes out, then you probably have this going on right here. Then we have uh, uh, the duodenum, the duodenum, and the ileum. Now all these different words mean is inflammation. The duodenum is inflamed, duodenitis, juodenitis, ileitis. You will not hear these words used very much and they're it's hard to pronounce as is, forgive my pronunciation. These terms are not used very often. There's inflammation here. There's inflammation here. The only way to know that is with an MRI or, or, or a capsule endoscopy. That's the only way that you can confirm that there's inflammation and damage in these parts of the intestine. And along with the ileum, the last part of the small intestine, just means there's inflammation in the ileum. Sometimes when they do a colonoscopy, they can get the camera here and they can get it a little ways in here so they can confirm if there's inflammation in the small intestine in the ileum, the last part, with um, with a colonoscopy. But again, usually they follow it up with an MRI. We also have a term called entritis, which means that there's inflammation in any part of the small intestine. But this is a term that has kind of been retired. It was more popular during the 1950s. I still wish they used this term instead of Crohn's disease. I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, the guy who discovered Crohn's disease, Dr. Burrell Crohn's, Crohn's means inflammation anywhere from mouth to butthole, but they really don't use the term that way. Like if I punch somebody in the mouth and then kick them in the butt, they're not going to get diagnosed with Crohn's disease. People usually get diagnosed with Crohn's disease when they find inflammation here. Like 75% of people get diagnosed with Crohn's disease when they find inflammation here, even though it doesn't fit the definition. Like this is how ridiculous the GI community is. They can't even get their term straight. Um, so we have a celiac and gluten intolerance. Celiac is a really silly term too. So celiac is Greek for abdominal. And Hippocrates and Celsius, all these Greek physicians, and up until the 1950s, celiac disease just meant that you just had digestive issues. It was like the term we use for Crohn's disease almost. And then some guy during World War II 
did some campaign